Hello, how's it going? I'm going to go over a quick overview of how to use Git for a type design project. On Mac OS, this should work on Mac OS or GNU plus Linux, um, but I'm using Mac OS. Um, I don't want to go too deeply into how to actually get everything set up. I just want to uh, let you know that help.github.com has um, a really good boot camp section that goes over all the basics of like fork a repo, create a repo, set up Git. So if you don't already have Git set up, this is a great place to go. Uh, and what I'm working on is I'm working on this repo that's a fork of a, someone's typeface and I'm upgrading it to be a variable font. And that's like a work in progress project. So I want to show you just the, the most basic commands I use to update this on Git, uh, or on GitHub. Okay, so here's the typeface open in glyphs, and here is the repo containing that typeface. Um, and I'm going to use, just to go over really quick, like I'm using the command line and there's basic Unix commands. And I think these are really important to know. I, so I, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Unix commands, like definitely go look that up. It's not, it's a really good skill to have. Um, it's worth knowing. So the basics are there's things like print working directory, show you where you are, you can cd into a directory that takes you into a different directory. Um, you cd dot dot to go down. We can do ls to show us what files are in the directory. Um, yeah. Anyway. And one last thing before I get started, I, the terminal I'm using isn't the default Apple term, terminal, it's iTerm2, and the graphics and formatting are done with ZSH, which is a, an alternative shell to Bash, which is the one that usually comes standard on Apple or GNU plus Linux systems. Okay. Let's get started. Let me see. Okay, so when you're in a git repo, you can do git status. Let's see. Okay, we can do, sorry, git status. And that tells us the basic information we need to know, like what's happening, like what what do we need to do next? So doing get status, um, think of it as like, you're like a commander of a ship or something, you, you need like a status report. You know, you wanna know like, what are all the like major things, major moving pieces that you need to know about without going into too much detail. So we're on the master branch. Um, and branches are, so say if I, if I want to test out a change to the typeface, I could make a, another branch where I would make changes and eventually maybe merge those changes back into the master branch. Um, okay. And it's up to date with the origin master. So you can do, um, get, um, We could do git remote v, and that shows me like what um, what am I fetching from and what I'm pushing to, and that is just um, this git repo. And to get help for any of this, so say like git remote, I want to know more about this. I can just do help and 
here it'll give me all the commands. So let's see. Um, yeah, there we go. So V, the V flag is just verbose. Be a little bit more verbose and show remote URL. Cool. And clear to clear the screen. Okay. So get status again. What's this? So um, it looks like the glyphs file has been modified, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not really sure I want to save those modifications, so I just want to clear that out and bring it to what is current. Um, I want to make that the same as um, what's shown, what is here. So get. Um, Check out sources blotter. Great. So now there's my local repo is completely caught up at the same place as the remote repo. Okay. So now over here in the the glyphs file, let's say hmm. I guess maybe I want to add decimal digits. Cool. So now, yep, we have that saved. And it looks like the source file has been updated. So now, say we want to push this version with decimal digits to GitHub. Um, we can do git add um, sources plotter.clips. And then if we do git status again, you'll see, okay, so we have that one um, thing is modified. And we want to, so now this has been modified on our local version, but we want to push that to the remote version. Um, and before we do that, the one step we have to do is the way git works is there's a git log which shows the different commits and a brief description of what was done in that commit. So I'm going to want to do git commit and, and And then if we do get status, see that's no longer waiting to be pushed. So now we can do get push or, oh, and one more thing. So if we do get remote verbose, we see that this is our origin. So when I say origin, I'm referring to this remote get repo. So get get push. So we're pushing these changes to remote get push origin and then master. So we're going to get push to the origin and the branch master. Wow, it's getting dark. I'm going to turn the light on. There we go. 
So look, okay, so that did some stuff. And now if I go over to GitHub, um, and we look at my sources, we'll see this was updated um, two minutes ago. And that will be the glyphs file with the decimal numbers. Great. Okay, so now say, let's see. Uh, just to show some more stuff, so say let's do, what are we working with here? So let's say, let's say I want to build a new font. And I'll kind of show you how this works. I've got, in the repo, I've got a, a build shell script that points to a build Python script. And so using Vim, I'm going to go look at the shell script. So this is just a one line bash command. I've used Python 3 to run source build.py and fix non-hinting. And the only reason this is in its own shell script is because running these, um, running this build script, a lot of times um, there'll be lots of flags and this is just a place to put it. So if someone else uses this repo, they like have an idea of what flags I was using. Okay, so let's do dot slash build to run the shell script. Our building and everything's turned off except fix non hinting. Okay, that's done. So if we do get status, we'll see that the font's been updated. So now we can do get add fonts blotter vf ttf, get commit. Okay, so now if we go back to the skit repo, we see this has been updated. Um, add the decimal numbers to the font file. Okay, so, and you see over here, we have branches, right? And this only has one branch. So, um, Let's see, like, what, how would we, how would we make, make a branch? Like, so, um, it's a little confusing because git checkout can be, um, can be used for a couple different things. It can be used for making a branch or, like, reverting files, and we're going to use it now, git check out the, let's call this test. So I do. So if I do this, you see where it says master up here. Um, switch to new branch test. Okay. So now if we do get status, that's the same. Now, um, to show you how this works on GitHub, let me add um, like a test part to the readme. 
So using Vim, and you can you can use any text editor you want, but I, I definitely think if you're working in the terminal a lot, Vim is a text editor that works in the terminal, and it has a lot of a really efficient, nice-to-use editing, modal editing system. It's the same as the command line. I think it's Vim is just a 21st century skill that's worth learning. Um, but I mean, you can use any text editor you want. Um, it, you'll probably just, um, it just seems like it's a lot more work to constantly be switching contexts. Okay. So I'm going to edit the readme and let's just add, um, so here before the specimen, let's add test. This is the test branch. All right. Um, so we're going to write and save and get status. We'll see that the readme has been modified now. And so now what we want to do is we want to add the readme to the branch and then push that branch to the remote um, the remote git host so that the branch isn't just on our computer it's at the host so we're gonna do git add readme git status okay so there's the readme and git commit And let's do um, And so then we're going to do get push origin test. Okay. And you can see um, it even gives you a lot of information about what happened here. So, um, you know, it says we've got um, all this information about the new branch created. So now we go over here and GitHub even knows it sees you've recently pushed branches test. So there's a new um, there's a new branch. And we go if we go down to branches now, let's see. You'll see we've got the master and the test branch here. Um, now you see here it just says blotter by Froyo Tam and here's the specimen. Let's switch to the test branch and yeah so here's our little test. And using this up here if we if we're happy with that test we can do can click compare and merge and we'll just write what we did right here and create a pull request. And this is super important because, so if you're working with fonts and you're doing something like you're updating a font on Google Fonts or something similar, a lot of times that's done with a pull request. So I'll make a branch of a font. So maybe I will branch the Google Fonts repo. I will make updates to the font and then I'll make a pull request um, to the master repo and that has to be reviewed and merged. So this is just with these these um, these simple things I think there's a lot you can do. I think you can even do so if we do git branch help I think you can do I think it's um, the d flag 
Yeah, so with a D or D option, branch will be deleted. So let's, since this was a test, for one last thing, let's just delete it. And this is kind of showing you how if you don't know what to do, just learn the basic commands and run the help flag, and you should be able to make progress. So let's do git branch d test. Or actually, I think a cool thing is you can do, if you do git branch, it shows like, okay, you've got master and test. And, okay, well, actually, before we do that, let's let's go back to the master, the master branch. So let's do git checkout. So now you see I'm back on the master branch and that hasn't changed. We go into the readme and we don't have that the new test section of the readme. Um, but still if we do git branch, we've got master and test. So let's do git branch delete test. And let's do And this is actually, this is kind of cool because I, um, that just deleted it locally. So here I hit something that I don't know how to do. I know that I can go here. So I've deleted the branch locally and I know I can go here and I know I can look at my branches and I know I can delete that branch. So there we go. It's deleted and I'm pretty sure that that wasn't the best way to do that. But it's the thing about Git is you just need to to get to the point where you can be productive and then it's going to be just years and years of learning because it's a great tool and it's worth it's worth exploring. Okay, um, I'm gonna call that good for now. Um, I want to make a better video like this, but you know this was just me, just kind of randomly showing stuff with no practice. What I want to do is I want to go in and like really write out a script of like these are all the things I want to cover and practice everything beforehand. Um, but unfortunately, you know, that's, you know, that's like a, maybe like a whole day project, if not more. So I just wanted to get something out there to start with. Um, and so if anyone, if anyone found this helpful, just leave a comment and that will encourage me to put more work into doing more detailed and planned tutorials. All right, well, thank you so much for watching, and yeah, please, please feel free to write any comments or questions you have. Thank you so much. Bye.